The Adventures of Sophie Mouse Number Two, The Emerald Berries, by Poppy Green, illustrated by Jennifer A. Bell. Chapter One, Forest Friends. In the heart of Silver Lake Forest, a mouse, a frog, and a snake talked and played by a stream. It was just another after-school play date for Sophie Mouse and her good friends, Caddy Frog and Owen Snake. Owen was lazily draped over a low-hanging tree branch. He watched as Sophie, sitting on a rock below, drew in her sketchbook. She was adding a bee to her garden scene. That reminds me of our field trip to see the honey beehives, Owen said. It was my favorite part of school this week. Mrs. Wise, their teacher at Silver Lake Elementary, had taken them to see how honey was made by the worker bees. Want to know my favorite thing from this week? called Hattie. She was hopping from lily pad to lily pad. It was the visit from Mr. Wallace, the flying frog. Mr. Wallace, an old friend of Mrs. Wise, had come to speak to the students about his flying adventures. He had extra webbing on his large feet. He could make gliding flights from tree to tree. Spotting a fish in the clear water, Patty raced to see if she could beat it to the big rock Sophie was on. Look at me, Patty shouted, I'm a flying frog. Meanwhile, Sophie sketched away her nose almost touching the paper. She was adding some ants to a log in the foreground. Maybe one of them should be carrying something, Sophie thought, like a seed or a piece of fruit. Ants are so strong. Sophie remembered a book she had read once. It said ants can carry things 50 times heavier than they are. That would be like a mouse carrying a pineapple. I don't think I could carry a pineapple. Plus, I don't think I'd want to. The one I saw once in the general store was so prickly looking. Sophie, Patty was calling. Sophie, hello, Sophie. What? Sophie replied. She looked up from her drawing. What did you say? Owen and Hattie laughed. You didn't hear a word we said, did you? Hattie asked. Owen added, I was asking you what your favorite part of this week was. Oh, said Sophie. She put her pencil eraser to her chin as she thought it over. That's easy, having art class outdoors. Mrs. Wise had taught a lesson outside on Wednesday. It was one part science and one part art. The assignment had been to look for different types of mushrooms and draw them. Sophie loved the outdoors. When she was in school, she liked to sit right next to the schoolhouse window. But Mrs. Wise said it made Sophie too daydreamy. Sophie had to admit, she did love an adventure, even if it was just an imaginary one. Harriet, came a, mom, came a voice from upstream. It was Hattie's mom. She was the only one who called Hattie by her full name. Anyone over there hungry? I've got a snack for you three. Snack? Sophie, Hattie, and Owen looked at one another. Then the race was on to Hattie's house. Chapter two, a trip to town. Queen me, Sophie said to her little brother Winston. They were playing acorn cap checkers. Sophie already had six queens while Winston had only two. It was Saturday morning in the mouse family's cottage, nestled between the roots of an oak tree. Sophie's father, George Mouse, had lived there all his life. In fact, his grandfather had built the cottage and most of the things inside, including the checker set Sophie and Winston were using. Winston's whiskers twitched. He was looking for his next move. He reached down and double jumped two of Sophie's pieces. Sophie gasped in surprise, then laughed. You're getting better, Winston. Winston smiled proudly. He was six. That was two years younger than Sophie. 
and he was always trying to catch up. Just then, they heard their mother, Lily Mouse, calling from outside. I have some errands in town. Anyone want to come? Sophie jumped up. I do, she cried. But we're not done, Winston complained. We'll finish later, Sophie said, and she dashed to the door. I promise, don't let Dad take my place. Sophie hardly ever passed up a trip into town. It was only a short walk down the path, but it was a fun change from their sleepy corner of Pine Needle Grove. The library was there, as well as the post office, the bookstore, and Lily Mouse's bakery, of course. Today was Lily Mouse's day off and she had some things to pick up at a few of the other shops. First, she and Sophie stopped at Little Leaf Bookstore. Sophie loved the smell of brand new books. Mrs. Mouse picked up a pastry cookbook she had ordered. She was famous for coming up with her own unique recipes, but she was always looking for new ideas. Enjoy, said friendly Mrs. Follett, the store owner. Next, they stopped at Handy's Hardware. Mr. Handy, an elderly badger, had put aside some wooden pegs that Mr. Mouse needed for a building project. Then, they zipped into the general store. Mrs. Mouse paid for a tin of dandelion tea. It went perfectly with the rolls and cakes at the bakery, so she always liked to have some on hand. Finally, Sophie and her mom stepped into a tiny shop called In Stitches. The owner, a bluebird named Mrs. Weaver, was the town's seamstress. Mrs. Mouse had asked Mrs. Weaver to make her a new apron. Hello, Lily. Hello, Sophie, Mrs. Weaver called out as they entered. Be with you in a moment. Mrs. Weaver was hemming the skirt of a lovely green silk dress on a hanger. Wow, Sophie cried, what a color. The fabric was a deep shimmery green that had flecks of blue sprinkled throughout. It reminded Sophie of the feathers on a mallard duck. Isn't it beautiful, Mrs. Weaver agreed. She fluttered over to them. That fabric was dyed with the juice from some very special berries. Berries, Sophie thought. She had never seen a berry that could make a color like that, and Sophie knew her berries. She gathered all kinds to make different colors of paint for her paintings. Sophie needed to get her hands on some of those berries. If they can make a fabric that color, she thought, just think what a beautiful paint color they could make. Where do these berries grow? Sophie asked excitedly. Mrs. Weaver shook her head. Oh, nowhere around here, dear, she said. Emerald berries grow in only one place in the whole wide forest. And it's a place you surely would not want to go. Sophie's brow furrowed. Why not, Mrs. Weaver, she asked. She couldn't think of anywhere in the forest she wouldn't go to get berries like that. Well, except maybe one place. It was a place Sophie had only ever heard of. It was Weed Snag Way, said Mrs. Weaver. Sophie gulped. Chapter three, Sophie makes a deal. Carrying their packages, Sophie and her mother strolled home. I think I'll make some dandelion tea and read my new cookbook when we get back, said Mrs. Mouse. Would you like some tea too, Sophie? But Sophie didn't hear her mom. She couldn't stop thinking about the emerald berries. Oh, why can't they grow somewhere other than Weed Snag Way? Sophie, Lily Mouse said again. Hmm, Sophie said, sorry, mom. I was just thinking, um, can I go over to Hattie's house to play? Oh, said Mrs. Mouse, sure. She took the wooden pegs and the apron, which Sophie had been carrying. Come home before dinner, okay? Okay, Sophie called, and she scurried off toward Hattie's house on the stream, while Lily Mouse went on to their cottage. Sophie did want to play with Hattie. She invited Hattie outside to skip stones on the stream, 
but she also wanted to tell her friend about the emerald berries. What? Hattie cried when Sophie told her. We'd snag way. Her eyes went wide with fear. Shh, Sophie said, looking toward Hattie's house. Keep your voice down. I know, I know, it's supposed to be dark and scary and all that, but I really want to find those berries. We just need... We? interrupted Hattie. You want me to go too? But Sophie, we don't even know how to get there. And it's not just dark and scary. It's supposed to be dangerous and... As she trailed off, Hattie threw a stone in the stream. She had stopped short of saying one other thing. Sophie knew what it was. Everyone had heard the story. A squirrel from Pine Needle Grove had ventured to weed Snag Way once. He'd never come back, and no one had heard from him since. But no one really knows what it's like, Sophie pointed out. She threw a stone, then turned to face Hattie. Remember how everyone at school was scared of Owen at first? It was because of all the stories they'd heard about snakes. Stories that weren't true. Sophie shrugged. Maybe Weed Snag Way is not really scary and dangerous at all. Hattie was quiet for a minute. She threw stone after stone into the stream. Some of them skipped. Some of them just plunked into the water. Then she spoke. Are you going to go there no matter what? Hattie asked. Sophie smiled. Hattie knew her so well. If I can find a map, Sophie said. Hattie sighed. You're going to meet a squirrel, I think. Oh, you think so? Uh-huh. I've, I've looked through this book before. And there's a squirrel later? Well, uh-huh. I, I Although it looks like a chipmunk. Okay. Well, well let's see. There's Hatt a stripe in the middle of its face. Mm -hmm. Hattie sighed. Then I'll come, but on one condition. If we run into any danger, we turn back. Deal? Sophie rolled her eyes, pretending not to like Hattie's rule. But secretly, she was relieved. She knew it was a good idea. Sophie jumped up. Deal! Chapter 4. The Journey Begins Early the next morning, Sophie added a few more supplies to her sack. A canteen of water, a sweater, a hat, and a scarf. Finally, she tucked in a tin of mint leaf biscuits. Hattie loved those. Can we shift it? Then, all dressed with her sack on her back, she paused at the front door of the silent cottage. Everyone else was still asleep. She didn't want to tell her parents where she was going. They might say she couldn't go, but it didn't feel right just leaving. So Sophie wrote a note. Can you read it? Went on a long hike with Hattie. Be back before dark, Sophie. She left it on the table. It's not the whole truth, thought Sophie, but it's most of it. Hattie was waiting outside her front door when Sophie arrived. Ready? Sophie asked excitedly. Hattie nodded, but she looked a little nervous. Don't worry, Sophie said. This will be fun, and I have everything we need. She reached into her sack and pulled out a map. I went to the library yesterday afternoon. I found a map of Weed Snag Way and copied it down. Wait, how? On her hand-drawn map, Sophie had marked the path in red ink. Weed Snag Way had a big red X on it. Sophie led the way. Hattie followed, slowly at first. But as they walked through familiar woods, Hattie's pace picked up. Soon, they were walking side by side, laughing and chatting. Then they came to the banks of Forget-Me-Not Lake. Hattie stopped. She gazed out at the lily pads on the water. Sophie knew what she was thinking. Hattie wished that this was their destination instead of Weed Snag Way. The friends loved coming to the lake together, 
to hopscotch across the water on the lily pads. But they didn't have time today. Sophie picked two honeysuckle flowers from a nearby bush. She handed one to Hattie. As they walked, they sucked the sweet nectar from the inside. A little while later, they heard a high-pitched voice coming from the branches above. Sophie, Hattie, the voice called. Sophie looked up. Zoe, she cried. She saw their friend from school flying down to say hello. I forgot that your house is over here. Well, said Zoe, my flightless friends hardly ever come over to this side of the lake. I guess it feels too far from home. But for us birds, it's just a quick flight into town. Sophie and Hattie laughed. I guess you're right, said Sophie, but we're going very far from home today. She explained that she and Hattie were going to try to find Weed Snag Way. Want to come with us? Oh, oh no, said Zoe, fluttering nervously. Weed Snag Way? No, thank you. I do not want to come. And off Zoe flew without another word. Chapter five, what's that sound? She didn't say she'd ever been there, Sophie pointed out. Hattie didn't reply. The two friends walked on quietly through the woods. Sophie kept checking the map. There should be a rocky hillside coming up, Sophie said. Sure enough, they soon passed a rise with a rocky face on one side. Next, we should come to a brook with a big log fallen across it, said Sophie. There up ahead was a babbling brook. The girls used the fallen log as a bridge to cross the water. Their route took them downstream along the brook. After a while, a large stream joined up with the brook. Now it was more like a river. The water got rougher and faster moving. Sophie and Hattie continued on through the woods along the riverbank. Soon, Sophie started to hear a sound. It seemed far off, but it was constant, like a gust of wind blowing on and on. As they walked, Sophie noticed that the sound was getting louder. Sophie looked at Hattie. Do you hear that? She asked. Hattie nodded. What is it? Sophie didn't know, but she was curious to find out. She sniffed the air, but all she could smell was the water of the river. She hurried on. The sound got louder and louder and louder. Before long, Hattie had to shout to be heard over the roaring sound. Sophie, she cried. I think we should go back. Hattie had stopped walking. Sophie looked toward the sound, then back at Hattie. She didn't want to go on without Hattie, but she did want to know what was making that noise. It felt as if they were so close. The roar almost seemed to shake the ground. In front of them were some tall reeds that blocked their view of the way ahead. Sophie scurried forward a few steps. She parted the reeds and poked her head through. What she saw took her breath away. Hattie, come look, she shouted. You have to see this. What do you think it is? It is the squirrel. You think it's a squirrel? Well, let's find out. See? Wait, it's a rainbow? It's a waterfall. It's a double rainbow? Hattie hopped over. Oh, my, was all she said. They were gazing out over a roaring waterfall. The rushing water caught the sunlight and glinted as it fell. Two rainbows made a double arc over the misty pool below. I've never seen anything so beautiful, said Hattie. The fear had left her face. In its place was a huge smile. Now this is an adventure, said Sophie. She pulled out the map to check their position. She studied it for several moments. Huh, she said, that's funny. Hattie looked at the map too. What's funny, she asked. Sophie looked up at Hattie. It's just, she began the waterfall. It's nowhere on the map. 
Chapter 6 Lost Sophie and Hattie backtracked so they could talk without having to shout. Sophie opened her sack. She took out the water and the mint leaf biscuits. While they nibbled, they looked at the map together. You're right, said Hattie at last. There's no waterfall anywhere on the map. She looked up at Sophie. So what do we do now? Sophie folded the map. She tucked it back into her sack along with the water and biscuits. She sniffed the air and looked around. She wasn't really sure which way to go. But if I tell Hattie that, she'll want to go home, thought Sophie. Sophie pointed toward the woods, away from the river. Let's go this way, she said, trying to sound confident. Hattie nodded and followed along. Phew, she said. I'm so glad that roar was coming from a beautiful waterfall. And that, well, not something else. They walked and walked deeper and deeper into the forest. Sophie looked up, down, and all around. She was trying to take everything in. The trees here are different, Sophie noticed. She was used to the oak and ash and pine trees in Pine Needle Grove. But these trees were all very tall with smooth white bark. Hattie seemed to notice too. Now and then, Sophie turned around to find Hattie studying a tree trunk. The first few times, Sophie didn't think much of it. Then it seemed as if Hattie was stopping more and more. Each time, just as Sophie was about to ask what she was doing, Hattie hurried along to catch up. Is it? darker here? Hattie asked after some time had passed. Or is it just my imagination? Sophie looked up. The tall trees and their leaves were blocking out most of the sunshine. It does seem very shady, Sophie said. They walked on a while longer. A, gust, a cold gust of wind blew past. Sophie's teeth started to chatter. Is it colder here too? Hattie asked. Sophie nodded. That definitely was a brisk breeze, she said. She pulled her scarf from her sack. She wrapped it around Hattie's neck. There. Better? Nearby, an owl hooted loudly in the trees. Startled, Hattie jumped. Sophie, where are we? They're in Wag Snack. Are they in Reed Snag Way? Reed Snag Way. Sophie looked down at her map. I'm not. Sophie didn't want to say it, but she honestly wasn't sure where they were. Hattie's look of fear was back, and now Sophie was feeling it too. She checked her sack. They had only a few biscuits left and a little bit of water. But worst of all, they were lost, and it was all Sophie's fault. What if they couldn't find their way home? Sophie couldn't help thinking. Would they end up just like the squirrel in the story? Just then, there was a rustling in the bushes right beside them. Sophie and Hattie grabbed each other's hands. Too afraid to run, they stood frozen to their spot. Then they saw it, a bushy gray tail sticking up from behind some leafy branches. Sophie and Hattie squeezed, squeezed each other tighter. They kept their eyes glued on the tail as it moved towards them, closer and closer and closer. Chapter 7 The Way to Weed Snag Way. With a sudden crack of branches, something with gray fur landed right at Sophie's and Hattie's feet. Ah! They cried. They covered their eyes in fear of the ferocious, Monstrous squirrel, said Sophie, peeking between her hands. With a flick of his twitchy tail, the squirrel tilted his head to one side, then smiled a big friendly smile. Afternoon, the name's Harry, Harry Higgins. Sorry if I scared you. I couldn't help overhearing. Do you need help finding your way? Sophie and Hattie looked at each other in disbelief and relief. Why, yes, Sophie replied. We could use a little advice. 
Well, 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 said Harry. I'm happy to help. I've lost my way before. No fun, no fun. Where are you headed? Patty spoke up. Have you heard of a place called Weed's Nag Way? Where the emerald berries grow? Sophie added. Harry Higgins' eyes went wide with surprise. Emerald berries? Weed's Nag Way? That's where you're going? Sophie got ready for another warning, just like Zoe's. But she was wrong. Instead, Harry Higgins wiggled his whiskers and chuckled. Of course I know how to get there. That's where I live. It is, cried Sophie. Are we close? asked Patty. Harry nodded. Follow me. Sophie couldn't believe their luck. She'd been about to give up, to tell Hattie they were lost. But they'd found the perfect guide. They excitedly followed Harry. He led them down a slope, over a rock pile, through a curtain of weeping willows, and then he stopped. Here we are, he said. Welcome to Weed Snag Way. Sophie peeked around him. For the second time that day, she gasped at the sight she saw. Hundreds of emerald green bushes lined the path on both sides. Long branches arched over the path, making a tunnel. The sparkling berries, I'm trying to tell you. I know. the dozens on each bush made it look like a deep green sky filled with twinkling stars. Sophie, Hattie, and Harry walked slowly through the arcade. Sophie reached out and picked one of the berries. She squished it between her fingers. The berry juice was a gorgeous shimmering green with blue flecks. Perfect, Sophie cried. What an amazing paint color this will make. She explained to Harry how she'd seen a dress dyed with emerald berry juice. That's why I was so eager to find some. Harry nodded. Oh, I understand he said. Do you know I was drawn here by the emerald berries too? I used to make and sell hats. One day I saw a swan wearing a beautiful hat pin made with emerald berries. I wanted to make one just like it. So I came out here to find Weed Snag Way. Harry paused then added, unfortunately I got a little lost. I found Weed Snag Way. Then I realized I didn't know the way home. Can you believe it? Harry laughed. It turned out okay, though. I decided I liked it here very much and wanted to stay. He sighed a small sigh. But now and then I do miss Pine Needle Grove. He is the lost squirrel? He's the lost squirrel. Hattie's jaw dropped. Sophie's eyes went wide. Sophie and Hattie looked at each other. Harry Higgins was the squirrel from the story. The squirrel who never returned from Weed Snag Way. Chapter 8. Harry Higgins' is Home. Harry, Sophie exclaimed, we are from Pine Needle Grove, too. Harry chittered in surprise. You are, he cried. Well, what a day, what a day. Visitors from Pine Needle Grove. He scurried off down Weed Snag Way. Then he stopped. He turned and waved for Sophie and Hattie to follow. This calls for tea. Come, I'll show you my house. Sophie and Hattie followed Harry halfway down Weed Snag Way. There, a tall tree grew out from the middle of the berry bushes. Sophie and Hattie watched. Sophie and Hattie watched as Harry scrambled up the tree trunk. When he got up to a large branch, turned and looked down. Stand back, he called. The girl stepped back as Harry dropped something down. It unrolled down the length of the trunk. The end of it came to rest at the base of the tree. A rope ladder, Sophie said in surprise. I've been waiting to use this. Come on up, Harry called. Patty climbed carefully up. Sophie followed right behind her. Welcome, said Harry, standing at the door of his little squirrel house. It was built right where the branch and the tree trunk met. Harry led them inside a comfortable one-room home. 
Sophie looked around at the tiny wood stove, the handmade table and stools, and the pine wood bed with its pine needle mattress. Please sit, said Harry. Make yourself at home while I get the tea going. But Sophie was too excited to sit. Mr. Higgins, Sophie said, we've heard of you. Yes, cried Hattie, you're famous in Pine Needle Grove. Harry wrinkled his nose. Famous? Me, he said. But what do you mean? Together, Sophie and Hattie explained. They told Harry that when he hadn't returned, folks back home decided something very awful had happened to him. Everyone thinks Weed Snedway is dangerous and scary, said Sophie. Harry shook his head. Oh, no, no, no. You two can plainly see. It's not scary at all. It is darker, I suppose, because of all the tall trees. And colder, Hattie pointed out. She, po she pulled Sophie's scarf tighter around her neck. It is colder. Harry nodded. Perhaps, but I think it's the most beautiful place in the world. Harry made the tea. Then the three of them sat chatting and laughing. They imagined what the animals of Pine Needle Grove would say if they could see them at that very moment. Outside Harry's round window, Hattie noticed the shadows getting longer. Sophie, I think we'd better start for home. You're right, Sophie replied. Then she felt a pang of panic as something dawned on her. She didn't know the way home. Oh, what do I say to Hattie? How can I tell her we're lost, just like Harry? As if reading her mind, Hattie looked right at Sophie and said, Don't worry, I know how to get home. Chapter 9, Hattie's Secret Sophie couldn't believe her ears. What? You know the way home? Hattie nodded confidently. But, but how? Sophie asked. Then something occurred to her. Hattie, did you know that I didn't know where we were? Hattie shrugged. Not exactly, she said, but back at the waterfall, you didn't seem so sure. So just in case, I thought I'd leave a trail. Hattie pulled a handful of long reeds out of her pocket. They were just like the ones at the waterfall. I tied reeds around some of the thinner tree trunks along the way. Sophie gasped. So that's what Hattie had been doing. She hadn't been studying the trees after all. Hattie, you're a genius, Sophie cried. Now we just need to follow the trail back the way we came. Hattie nodded. Sophie threw her arms around her and hugged her tight. Oh, Hattie, she cried, thank you. Thank you for being so careful and practical. Hattie's green face blushed pink. You're welcome, she said with a laugh. Then she turned to Harry. Mr. Higgins, would you like to come with us? We can take you back to Pine Needle Grove. Harry thought it over. Then he said, no, thank you. I don't have any family there. And really, Weed's Neck Way is my new home. But you're welcome to come visit me again any time. Sophie and Hattie smiled. We will. And when you do, Harry added, might you bring something from that wonderful little bakery in town? Perhaps a marigold cupcake with blueberry icing? Harry rubbed his tummy. Sophie laughed. We could do that, she said. In fact, I know the owner very well. Chapter 10, The Whole Truth. Passing back through Weed Snag Way, Sophie gathered enough of the emerald berries to fill her pockets and Hattie's. Then Harry led them back to the spot where they'd met. The girls said goodbye to their new friend and set off for home. They had no trouble following Hattie's trail back to the waterfall. From there, they then followed the river upstream. They crossed the fallen log to the other side. The map showed them the rest of the way home. Sophie dropped Hattie off at her house. Do you think anyone will believe what we found in Weed's Neck Way? Sophie asked. Hattie smiled. Either way, we know the truth.
Sophie reached her house just before dark. Inside, she dropped her sack by the front door. Her dad was in the kitchen cooking dinner, carrot stew by the smell of it. Her mother and brother were on the sofa playing cards. Sophie smiled. She was so happy to be home. Well, hello, stranger, George Mouse called from the kitchen. That must have been quite a hike. You've been gone all day. Sophie hesitated. She knew she had to tell her family about her adventure. Over dinner, she told them the whole story. Her mom and dad listened without saying a word. But Sophie could tell by their faces they were not pleased. I know, Sophie said, I should have told you. The map was not right, and we could have gotten lost. I was lucky to have Hattie with me. Mr. and Mrs. Mouse looked at each other. Sophie got ready for a scolding. Please do not ever venture so far off again without telling us, her mother said to her sternly. I won't, said Sophie, I promise. Mr. Mouse cleared his throat. And another thing, he said. Uh-oh. Sophie, here it comes. But her dad smiled and held out his hand. Let's have a look at these emerald berries. That evening, Sophie tried out her brand new paint color, emerald berry. She painted a beautiful scene of Weed Snag Way with a waterfall way off in the distance. Rising up from the emerald berry bushes was a tree with a rope ladder hanging down the trunk. And there, at the top of the long ladder stood one happy squirrel. The end.